All right, g'day IB psychologists. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can write better exam answers, show deeper understanding, and score higher marks for your critical thinking with this simple little model here. All right, so remember that in psychology, the fundamental question is, how and why do humans think and act the way they do? Now, all of your exam questions are designed around that fundamental question, understanding how and why we think and act the way we do, understanding our cognition and behavior. So, most of your exam questions, you have to explain how one factor influences our thinking or our behavior. Let's take the biological approach, for example, right? You look at all those topics, hormones, pheromones, genetics, the brain, that you have to understand how those factors influence human behavior. So the first step when you're revising and you're trying to figure out what's the best study for each topic, I would figure out, what am I trying to explain, right? Are you given the behavior, like in the options, a health problem or um, a psychological disorder, and you're left to figure out the explanation? Or, like in the core, are you given the explanation, hormones, pheromones, cultural dimensions, and then you're, you get to choose the behavior, right? So, first of all, figure out this really basic relationship, right? Now, I recommend to my students, this becomes your central argument. You want to build a really solid foundation for a this explains this, and a simple meta-analysis, an animal study, or a correlational study can be really useful to demonstrate this relationship. All right, let me give you an example, okay? Let's take testosterone. So my basic explanation here is if I change levels of testosterone, I'm going to influence aggression. More specifically, increase in testosterone leads to an increase in aggression. That's a very basic explanation that is pretty well uh, supported in a lot of studies. That's the how, right? now. Um, my, uh, so a couple of good studies you might use here, like the Albert et al, the rat study, right, where they use castration, they manipulate the testosterone in very controlled environments to measure the effects of aggression. Problem with that, that's a great animal study to use, especially high level students. The problem with that study maybe is you're discouraged to use animal studies uh, in the paper one. So perhaps then a, a correlational study like Ehrenkrantz, that could be a good study where it just simply uh, correlates levels of testosterone in people, uh, in prisoners with uh, violent criminal, sorry, with aggression. Okay, now, especially in an essay, that's a very good, basic, change testosterone, we influence aggression, right? Now, here's where we get into the deeper explanation, though, and this is this all-important box up here. This explanation is kind of limited. We say, yeah, we change this, we get to this. But there's no explanation of why. And that's where I would recommend, especially for your essays, where you're trying to demonstrate critical thinking in your essays, you introduce a second study that, uh, that explains the why. Now, if we look at uh, testosterone, for example, this is why I really like the study by Radke. This is why I put this in my criminology unit, because Radke's study shows why testosterone is linked with aggression, and it's to do with its influence on the brain. So what we see in Radke's study is that if you alter levels of testosterone, when someone's exposed to a threat and the motivated to try to deal with that threat uh, in an fMRI, they have higher levels of activity in their amygdala. Now the amygdala is our emotional center of the brain. So if we have high levels of activity in our amygdala, our stress response is generated, someone's threatening us, if we're motivated to deal with that now, suddenly we have the arousal and the alertness to respond and to react to that threat. So testosterone biases our amygdala to confront someone who's threatening us. Very easy to see how that could lead to aggression. This now, I've got two steps here where I've got a very detailed explanation of a behavior. I've, I've laid the foundation, and this is really important, I've laid the foundation by saying, here's how, here's a very basic animal study or a very basic correlational study, maybe a, met, a meta-analysis, right? These two things are linked. Keep it very simple, right? And, and again, I really wanna reiterate that in the beginning, build the foundation for your essay with this simple explanation. Now, you've built the examiner's trust, you've built your reader's trust, they can follow your train of thought. I get it, this is straightforward. Change testosterone, change aggression. Now, you come over with the right overhand and go, boom, but why? Because testosterone now influences the brain. Now, I am really looking more here towards the essays, because to write an, I've seen excellent short answer question responses that directly go to red case study uh, to aggression, but that can be pretty challenging. So if you find that too challenging in the, in the space of an SAQ, maybe just look at this with a basic correlational study. But in an essay, this now shows detailed understanding. You're gonna score higher marks for knowledge and understanding, because look, you know now uh, what the variable is, what testosterone is, how it's linked with aggression, and why. You're also gonna score higher marks for the use of studies, because suddenly you've got two studies now that support these two separate points. You're also, possibly, I, in my own marking, 
I don't know what this is critical thinking because I don't. I think this is deeper understanding. But I, I, st I think in an exam, examiners will interpret this as showing detailed critical thinking. But here's where the real critical thinking comes in. I think. What are you showing here? You're not just showing that it's a equals b. You're saying a equals b because of c. So it's not just a. You're showing testosterone influences aggression, but it's not just testosterone. So if the, if the question is, discuss the effects, give a balanced review, you're saying, yeah, testosterone influences it, but it might not if it wasn't for the brain. The testosterone is only having an influence through the brain. Now, in a later video, in the next couple of videos, actually, I'm going to go through the three explanations of post-traumatic stress disorder using this very model. We're going to look at biological, cognitive, social, cultural approaches, and then how they intertwine. So stick around uh, in the next videos, you'll see those. But getting back to my point here, this shows testosterone has an effect through the brain. And so now we know that there's actually two factors involved here. And so if you look, uh, same thing for serotonin, okay? We can say serotonin, um, basic correlational studies, uh, true experimental studies on animals show a very direct cause here between serotonin and aggression. But why? Because of its influence on the brain. What we're also looking at here is the, this is where I define critical thinking is arguing against yourself, right? Arguing against uh, the central argument. So my central argument in my essay here is going to testosterone influences aggression, but then I have, a, uh, and then I'm developing that thesis, but my counter argument is, but, right? But it's not just testosterone. Now, a lot of students in the first year of my course, and when we do criminology, I allow students to introduce a completely separate variable here. So for example, the question might be, to what extent do hormones influence behavior? You could say testosterone affects aggression. And then a lot of my students, and I, I allow this in year one of my course, where they'll say, but it's not just testosterone. It might also be something like culture. And so they say testosterone affects aggression, but look, culture can also influence aggression and they'll use culture of honor studies. Now, again, in year one, that's okay, I accept that. But here's how you make that even stronger. And if you're doing that in your exams, you might, you might get a mark, but you're introducing a whole nother variable. We can make that argument stronger. You can show detailed critical thinking. You can simply score higher marks by connecting it to this. And that's where the culture of honor studies can be really good because what do they show? They show that in the experimental paradigm, if you know the culture of honor studies, I'll, I think I've got them on my blog post, I'll put a link in the description. What they show is actually participants from the southern states of America, from the culture of honor, when they're offended, they have a spike in testosterone. Now see, instead of just saying it's, it could also be culture, I'm linking culture now to this variable. So it's far more directly relevant to the question. I can use the exact same study, but, but just by tying it to this variable, now it's far more relevant. I'm going to score higher marks. I can say, yes, sure, it, um, it could be testosterone influencing aggression, but what am I saying here? Where does that change in testosterone come from? The change in testosterone, some people have higher levels of testosterone than others, and therefore, and we can see that in the culture of honor studies. Okay, and so, that again, so we're arguing this is this relationship, but we're going one step further. Where does that change in testosterone come from? I can then further argue, well, this could uh, also show why men are more aggressive than females, because naturally we have higher levels of testosterone than females, right? Could also argue why violence tends to be a predominantly young male uh, phenomenon, right? And because young males have higher testosterone than older males, right? So old fogies like me, unfortunately, right? My testosterone, testosterone's going down, especially with the third kid on the way, right? That further decreases my testosterone. Uh, so I hope this model makes sense. Now, the only way to fully understand this is to have many examples. So that's why in the next videos, I'm gonna go through each etiology of post-traumatic stress disorder, the brain, the biological explanation, sorry, the cognitive explanation and the socio-cultural. And hopefully by watching those three, you get a deep understanding of how we can apply this model. I would also even just recommend that you can diagram this when you're essay planning. I really like this diagram um, for figuring out how to write a good essay. In actual fact, I use this diagram all the time when I'm writing resources um, for, for students. So at the moment, I've just finished writing a unit on stress for the health psychology. I'm now researching depression uh, for the abnormal psychology unit. And I use this model to figure out, okay, am I, am I providing the foundation here for students to understand the basic, under, the, the basic relationship? And then where's my second study that's going to connect all this to allow students to go deeper and score higher marks. And so I recommend this is a very, very effective model. 
Uh, for teachers, if you're watching this, you might also like to use this if you're creating resources or finding out the best way to approach each topic. All right, there it is. I hope that's helpful. Remember what, how, and then go deeper, right hand over the top, really well your examiner with the why, and then we're saying but. Okay, cheers, good luck.